this second part, we're going to move on to configuring the scene's animation. The first thing we're going to do is change our layout to the animation one to gain more workspace. We start by setting the resolution for our animation. We go to the render panel and in the timeline, we'll set a square resolution in our case. For it to take effect in the IPR, we need to select it in globals. Now our canvas is configured to start placing cameras. We'll start by creating a front camera. We go to the camera properties and change the focal to 60, which is more appropriate for small objects. We continue adjusting the position we like in the IPR and use the create camera button. Now we select and delete the rest of the cameras to clean the scene. Next, we create a motion controller and drop it onto the camera. We want to create slow movements, so we stretch the motion controller to 150 frames. Now in its properties, we set the initial frame to change the position on the z-axis and create a zoom out effect. By scrubbing and using play, we can see how the movement is looking. We don't want it to end abruptly, so we're going to set the easing to easy out. Again, we press play and keep adjusting. Now let's add movement to the ring that's in a vertical position. We create a new motion controller and drop it onto ring A. It's a good idea to rename motion controllers with descriptive names to keep the scene well organized. Now we stretch the rotation of ring A to match the duration of the zoom out. We go to a final frame and set the rotation to two turns. We check how the animation looks, and in this case, we'll also change the easing so the rotation ends smoothly with easy out. Now we're going to add a very interesting effect for jewelry, as we saw in another tutorial, which is animating the depth of field. We go to the first frame and then to the camera properties. On the focus parameter, we set an animation key and uncheck the disable global DOF option to see the blur. Now in the final frame, we set a focus point right on the diamond. We lock the exposure on the aperture parameter and increase it quite a bit so the effect is more subtle. We check the animation and create new animation keys using the control shift left click shortcut. Using play, we can check if we like the effect. To further enhance the look of the scene, we're going to rotate the refraction environment to see how a very interesting movement happens inside the diamonds. We go to the first frame and add a keyframe on the refraction angle. Now we go to the final frame and set a rotation of 180 degrees. With scrubbing, we can see the effect a bit. and maybe we'll increase it to 250 degrees. For such subtle effects, creating a quick animation preview won't help much, so we'll have to render the scene with low quality, so it takes little time. We're going to activate the glare, which we had temporarily disabled. And now we configure the render to be very fast so we can check the result. We go to the render panel and launch a draft render, which already has the quality set for speed. We set the output path and render. In a couple of minutes on my card, which is a 2080, we'll have the result. 
we open the video and see how it turned out. You can see the camera's focus shift and how the refraction environment rotates, creating a very interesting and eye-catching effect. Let's continue with a new camera animation. We disable DOF and glare to work more comfortably. We move to a position to see the side of the ring and create a new camera. Since this camera is a copy of the one we already have and is animated, it contains those keyframes which we'll need to delete. We select them in keyframe mode and delete them easily. Now we create a new motion controller and rename it properly. We drop it onto the new camera and move it so it starts right after the previous animation. We reposition the camera and save its position and remember the yellow house icon that warns you the position isn't saved. We stretch the motion controller duration to make the movement slower. We'll create a target object to better control the camera's rotation and movement. We move it to the center of the ring and in the motion controller's coordinates we select pivot and choose the created target. Now we configure translation and rotation on the correct axis until we like it. We scrub to check the animation. We hide the target's gizmo so it doesn't get in the way. And we activate the DOF to configure it. We set the focus point on the side and check that the focus doesn't hold throughout the movement, so we're going to animate it. We go to the initial frame, and in the camera properties, we add a keyframe on the focus. We go to the final frame and add another keyframe with set focus point. At a middle point in the movement, we can add another keyframe using the control shift click shortcut. Now let's continue animating the rotation of the refraction environment. Double click on the timeline parameter to go to its properties. At the final frame, we change the value to 360 to add a new keyframe. Now let's launch a draft render to see the result. We go to the render panel and set the frame range between the frames we want. We change the output path and launch the draft render. I just noticed we didn't activate the glare but that's okay, so we'll cancel the render. Now we activate the glare and immediately launch the draft render again. We wait a couple of minutes and see the result. We open the video and check whether we like it or need to make some adjustments. In this case, we're going to change the easing so the movement ends smoothly. And finally, we'll create one last camera animation to wrap up this tutorial. What we want to do is a horizontal turntable that also moves up and down vertically. We place the IPR view as we like it and create a camera. We delete the inherited keyframes from the previous camera to have a clean animation. In this case, we'll create an assembly to drop the camera into and better control its movements. The assembly is at the center of the scene and we're going to rename it.
we create a motion controller and rename it. We drop it inside the assembly, move it in the timeline, and adjust its duration. We go to a final frame and configure the rotation. Remember to click the yellow house icon to be in the camera position. We scrub and readjust the rotation so the horizontal ring ends in a frontal position. Now we'll set up the vertical rotation. We duplicate the motion controller and rename it. We drop it onto the assembly and adjust the rotation at a final frame. We need to configure two rotations on two axes. The rings are moving out of the camera's position. So we're going to animate the translation on the z-axis. We scrub to check the animation. Since we want the rotation to go up and down, we activate the ping pong option. We adjust the easing and tension so the movement starts and ends slowly. If we want a quick preview, we set the initial and final frames in the timeline and press play. The movement is achieved. We continue by adding a new keyframe to the refraction environment as we've done before. We activate the glare and the whole animation setup is now complete. All that's left is to assign cam switch to each camera so the animation changes as it progresses in the timeline. We create the motion controllers and drop them onto their corresponding camera. We adjust the position and duration easily, as you already know. Once we have them all, we change the first frame to one and select the first camera in the camera combo box then scrub and see how it automatically switches between cameras. If we press play, we can see the final result of the animation. Obviously, animation work requires constant adjustments as you see the overall result, so feel free to keep tweaking. Finally, we can add some front plates to create a fade in and fade out effect. We create one at the beginning of the video and set its opacity to start in black and then reveal the animation. We can add another one between two cameras to create a transition between them using the ping pong easing option. Now all that's left is to render the full animation. We go to the render panel and configure for final render with a sampling around seven. We change the mode to full animation timeline and render. We end the tutorial by watching the result of the rendered video with good quality. Surely you've learned new and interesting techniques to apply to your projects. This is all for now. See you in the next video. Have fun rendering with Maverick.